Hey everybody, it's Rob from Flail Throughs. This is Gundam Battle Operation 2, and this is a request from 6th Pulsar, who wanted the Gyaradoga in Gyaradoga Kai colors. And, uh, the Gyaradoga Kai isn't that different from the standard one. I mean, physically, it's got a weird head like it's wearing a, like a, you know, slightly pointy hat. And other than that, it's just got a, some. It's got some uh, some off white in places where the standard Gyaradoga has gray or green. So that's that's pretty much what I aimed for. Luckily, the color breakdowns worked well for that. So and yeah, it is. Uh, it is the Gyaradoga is pretty good. I have I had a very hard time getting around. I was satisfied with for this request. It took me probably a month. But uh, finally got one here that I uh, that I enjoyed here on the military port. So I don't know what ma uh, why it made the difference. Just I think the the amount of space because Gyaradoga is generally an up close mobile suit, but getting up close without getting yourself focused and killed is the hard part. And just the ability to well hide from giant missiles among other things like that uh, just makes it a little bit easier. It's got a beam machine gun with an E-Pack, which is an interesting uh, piece of kit, and uh, and I'm about to use up all my boost trying to get up here and failing, because, yeah, just... The geometry does just as well I didn't, because now I've got uh, a Zogok to fight, but yeah, the geometry is a little bit finicky on this map. You, you've, you've dealt with the, uh, you know, uh, with the weirdness of some of the rocks on other maps, I know, if you played this, so... And didn't quite tag the Zogok with my uh, with my enameled wire, but yeah, the uh, rocks are a little bit uneven. You you end up kind of uh, looking for you know good uh, good angles and good positions and you know Bethesding your way up the rocks, but it's it can be tricky. And but right now, luckily, the enemy has decided to come down here, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to fight down here, and enamel wire. The enamel wire is the best of the heat rod style weapons in the game. It is the fastest, it does pretty good damage, it still causes heavy stagger, and I just got one of my teammates killed by knocking them over while I was uh, going into melee. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the combo when you're up close with the enamel wire. You knock something down and you go into melee. I'm going to pay for it now though, so yeah, that's just a thing. And somebody's signaling to bunch up, which is good advice as always. Oh, looks like we caught somebody with support fire, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And the enemies are now support firing too, which... Uh, where is that? was hoping I'd be able to make it out on the map, but I just don't see it, so... Interesting. It needs to make more of an effect on the surface of the water so it's easier to find. But, uh... It may just be the map so big that I missed it. You may have seen it, but... Yeah, I am back. I am with the team. And we are going to see if we can even things up. It's 1400 to 3900. That's that's like four kills behind at 500. That's not, a, well, five kills behind, which is not the world. But yeah, somebody's saying stay close. I am attempting to do just that because, yeah, it's, uh, we need to stay close. We need to, uh, we need to uh, keep together because we're, ooh. No, I don't think I took the hit, but I, it was a close thing. But yeah, we're, we're going to have to stick together and focus fire if we want to beat these guys, especially now that we're going to be fighting over point D from the look of things. So it's the prototype Stark Jagan, which is probably the most dangerous thing on the enemy team uh, for me to deal with. Luckily, I, I know from bitter experience that uh, dealing with the edges of the rocks with, uh, inter with the edges of any kind of rock formation with, uh, oh dang, sorry, um, with, uh, you know, uh, with ballistic weapons, especially, you know, explosives, not a, not a winning prospect. So yeah, if I can just get uh, down below the lip of the rock, he is much more likely to uh, to uh, tag the rocks than me. So, managed to get that kill. We're all kind of... You know, that of course is the, pro the uh, downside of sticking together, uh, is you end up competing for kills and knocking each other over a fair bit, but it can be mitigated if you're willing to try, and I am willing to try. Caught it with the heavy stagger, but did not. Uh, heavy stagger didn't take. Also, the damage did, and I got a kill. Saved the desert Gelgug from uh, Zogok damage there, hopefully. And this poor Hygog is about to have a very hard time. I think it's just going to try and get some damage in on somebody before it uh, goes. And yep, I wired it, and now I'm going to fight the person who just spawned in. 
Looks like there's at least two, maybe three. So, uh, some of them are below the surface of the water, so they are not going to show up on my radar until I, too, am below the surface of the water, thusly. And let's see, yeah, I'm chasing down the Zagaki because I have type advantage and I, uh, you know, I can fight it hand-to-hand -hand fairly well up close and I have some good ranged uh, equipment to wear it down before it gets to me. It's trying. It really is trying. But the, by the time it gets here, it's going to have a bad time. Yep, rolled out of the way. Somebody else may get this kill, but the kill is ready. Okay, well, my legs are overloaded. Yeah, I stum... Again, speaking of just Bethesda physics, I stumbled over a tiny little, like, just shift in the in the geometry of the ground. And my legs were damaged enough that that counted as a fall off a ledge or a jump, and it kept me still from my legs being overloaded, and that's why I got killed, so... That was irritating. But yeah, that's just one of those things. They have smoothed out the geometry of other levels over the years, and it's going to be the same this time. So, you know, it's it's just one of those things that you end up having to deal with, and eventually, eventually, hopefully, it gets better. I do think it will. But, uh, let's see. Um, spawning back in with about a minute and ten sec or a minute and fifty seconds left to go trying to keep with uh, the team. We are behind, but... Oh, and it looks like we sank a boat. Nice. But, yeah, we are... Uh, we are uh, gonna... We are going to uh, try and fight it out, and we've got 90 seconds left to uh, get, like, two, three kills and, you know, keep ourselves alive. I'm trying to get to number two, who seems to be in trouble. Luckily, number two is not alone, but there is a lot of stuff here, so, yeah, just gonna have to, you know, support the team and pick where to engage. Where to engage seems to be get on whatever that is up there first. But they're all moving in. You know, it's the last minute of the round and everybody's going for it, so it's going to be a thing. And took the grenade. Didn't get the uh, beam uh, axe uh, to go with it. Let's see. Bomb is planted at our base, but it is too late. We can ignore it safely, and that means they are down a person for the crucial last minute of the round, so... You know, bomb carefully, because that can happen. But, let's see, Zagak E is down. That's the prototype sh uh, Stark Jagan. I'm going to be on the other side of the rocks from that. And missed the wire. And, let's see. Um, Yep, just got to get some kills here. Zogok is ready to go, if I can just stay focused. If somebody else gets it too, I'll be just as happy. But we got it. We've got... No, we don't have the lead. They got a kill at the same time. So, yeah, we just have to... We have to kill one person and not be killed ourselves. There is the Stark... Uh, Proto Stark Jagan, and it is down. So now we just have 10 seconds to stay alive. Yeah, the one thing about the timer is that... Uh, the bomb timer is because it doesn't count, like, fractions of a second. If you're a tiny bit behind, you actually can get it off, but not the whole thing. Uh, I mean, not a whole second, so... And they were a whole second behind, so we got it. Just barely, but we got it. And I was top score at 3,600, and uh, I thought it was a pretty good round. So, hope you enjoy it, Pulsar. And that is going to do it for today's Gun and Battle Operation 2. We'll be back soon with more. Till next time, everybody take care and have fun. Later! I'm still hoping we get Resin Schneider's Giradoga because there is another ranged weapon for the Giradoga line that we don't have represented, so I think it's possible. I'm hoping so anyway.